Uh, welcome back, everybody. Hey. You don't want to do the thing? You, you, you um, kind of mean to me last time when I did the intro, so I don't, I don't want to do it again. I don't think I was mean to you. Sorry that the fucking truth hurts. It does hurt. It's painful. It is very, very painful. I feel it. But No, you got it. Uh, episode three, Nasty Wear Podcast. Your host, <laughs> Luke Frazier, Nate Russell. I was, I was actually t- telling Mark earlier, I think you are the host of this. Is this is this my thing? I'm I'm the, I'm just the star. I'm the star <laughs> star power. I was in the fucking uh, JFK lounge. Maybe it was LAX. I was in one of the lounges uh, recently, and uh, American Amer- American uh, Airlines Admirals Lounge. Actually, I think I was in the fucking first class lounge. I was in a lounge, mm-hmm. and uh, they were showing Step Brothers. Oh no, they were showing Old School, but it made me think of Step Brothers. But I haven't seen Old School in a long time. Old School is but a fucking. There was banger. a bunch of like old people kind of like transfixed on it. It was pretty insane. <laughs> well, they hadn't seen that movie that came out in two thousand and nine. Uh, that shit came out in like oh two, I think. You think? Huh? That was. I think that was more formative than I'd like to admit on my comedy. You think you think so? I mean, like I loved that movie when I was like fourteen. What is that like a Jud? Is that a Judd Apatow movie? Uh, didn't he die? The act- I don't think it's Judd Law. Who the fuck is Jude Judd Law? Law? Jude Law. Yeah, he the died. Dude- he, he's dead, right? He's like, the one who played the Joker. Jude Law. That's the dude from Extends, and uh... no, that's the dude from Gattaca, ain't it? Jude Law's <laughs> alive, bro. Jude, if you're watching this, come on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> he's in Gattaca, bro. He is in Gattaca. Gattaca. Yeah. yeah. No, Judd Jud Apatow Ap- did King of the Hill and Be with Some Butthead, right? Uh, yeah. no, you're thinking of Mike Judge. Yeah, like Same shit, Jud dude. Apatow That's- Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, I bet you love Freaks and Geeks. Yeah, old fucking wanna be fake vibey ass show. That's for like, <laughs> that's for kids who like wanna be so fucking different, bro. <laughs> Freaks and Geeks. Freaks and Geeks is for fools who like really are on some like, you know, like. They always cancel the best shows, like Arrested Development, Freaks and Geeks. The mainstream can't handle real comedy or real shows, and they canceled, like, the good shows. But this is a show I really like because I get it, you know? It's always somebody with that kind of head-ass energy who likes those shows. I'm not a big Judd Apatow fan, if I'm I, being honest. I, I, I mean, I'm going to keep it a buck. I still don't know who he is. He's the guy he did. He did Pineapple Express. He did... No, Seth um, Rogen did that, bro. I know. Seth Rogen was in the film. Nah, but he also did it. He, it's like a Seth Rogen movie. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, fair enough. What else we got? What else did he do? What else did Judd Apatow do? Uh, what is what is like other um, other yeah. movies? Because every single movie are like cast with the same people from like Freaks and Geeks. Oh, it's all, all those dumbass Seth Rogen movies. Him. Yeah. Oh my uh, god. Zach and Miriam make a porno. You know Judd Apatow was running around Los Feliz in some fucking flip flops with like stonewashed jeans going to Lassen's. <laughs> he did super bad. I don't like super bad, but I, I hate what's the fat actor's name? Jonah Hill. Yeah, I hate Jonah Hill because he, he's been stealing my fucking swag for that. years, bro. <laughs> no, no cap. His style. Like yo, that. I would like post a fit pic and like a week and a half later, there would be a picture of him at Complex wearing the exact same no shit. No fucking way. He, I, he started getting like Smith Street tattoos and shit. Bro, want to be me so bad. <laughs> is yeah. it is it on site with Jonah Hill? No, I saw him. He came into round two one time. And he, I think he saw me and got shook and left. I think he, I don't think he's really in a place to really be doing anything. I think he's like in trouble. He's a fucking gazillionaire. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. But I think he's like canceled. I think all of the, the thing what, was he got canceled for that shit with his girlfriend, right? His girl's a surfer, uh-huh. and she was out like surfing every day, and she's probably presumably a bad bitch because he's famous and rich, mm-hmm. and. Um, I guess he wasn't fucking with her, like um, hanging out with the Point Break dudes, and like. <laughs> hit her with some like crazy long ass therapy talk about how like he feels traumatized and victimized and it's like triggering him that she's out there with dudes with abs and she aired his ass out because he was (laughs) because also like and this we might be able to this could be a whole other episode of the podcast but people Uh are using like i we had a a conversation with somebody about this now the other day but like people using like therapy talk and like being triggered and like all that like trauma shit as like a way to actually try to manipulate people is so crazy and it's so like prevalent now. I mean, that's a really elite new version of just gaslighting, being like, it's you need not therapy. though, because there's no nuance to it. It's so obvious what you're doing. Real <laughs> manipulators know how to do it without doing that type of shit. <laughs> I wouldn't know, but I've been around it. It's like using the language that your therapist told you, being like, yo, like 
uh, like you going out, like you having fun with your girls and going on this girl's trip is really triggering my trauma because I have trust issues from my first relationship when I was 13. You know, like using like that type of shit, just basically just being like, I don't like your girlfriends. I want to control you. Rah, 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 rah. You know, like, and so when people use this therapy th speak, they think they're being good people, but it's the same as like the like super fake neoliberal people who like claim that they like love homeless people but like won't help like pay for housing <laughs> low-income housing in their neighborhood and shit you as know? i walk out of my expensive lower east side apartment and see a man shooting up between his nasty no, but toes. i'm talking about on some like you know like like bay area shit yeah, you know? yeah. i'm mainly talking about like people from like the bay or like you know like like people from like berkeley and shit i mean i've never been out there but all i hear is fucking horror stories that is horrible out there that's hypey though I feel like hit your little thizzle dance. <laughs> I, I would, but it's, we don't have enough room on the camera. <laughs> All right, were you into Bay Area music coming up? No, you didn't like uh, Mac Dre? No. No? Nah? Mm -mm. Uh, shout out uh, Keith World. That's my bro. For real. He's an artist now. Jaleel. What did you... <laughs> No, it's not. His name's Jaleel. Oh, oh, I was like, Jesus, not like Jaleel. Yeah, backflip. I'm talking about like his name is Jaleel. Oh, is that the dude that you sold the Benz to? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He hopped in that Benz. He looked so fucking happy. I remember seeing that. Man, I was happy. I fucking sold it. <laughs> Feel. Him. So, what music were you listening to growing up? Because I was definitely LimeWire, Hidden Fucking Mac, Dre. All right, so here, here's the progression of it. Uh huh. Um, you know, grow up. You listen to like REM, Dave Matthews Band. You know, that's what my dad was listening to. Oh, word. Then, you know, I started getting angsty. I was listening to like new metal and shit, you know, like corn, Limp Biscuit, Slipknot. Yeah, I still like that shit. I listen to it at the gym <laughs> on the low. That's uh, And then I um, like got to like, you know, middle school and I started just like listening to rap music. And so it was like, like I like Nas a lot. Like mm -hmm. my first rap album was Stillmatic. And then I started listening to like Dipset, you know, all that shit, like freaky, like, DJ Clue mixtape shit. Like, John, me and Jara Carmonica are always talking about, like, all these, like, obscure... He, like, hates that I'll bring it up to him because he used to be a hip-hop writer. <laughs> uh, but, like, obscure, like, DJ Clue, like, mixtape rappers and shit, like Ransom and, like, Gravy and shit. Never the, heard of any Gravy's of Gravy's the dude who played Biggie in the Biggie movie. The newest one? The, I mean, the, what do you mean the newest one? The, I there's feel like one there's of two. Them. Yeah, like, <laughs> you mean the one from the 80s when he was, before he was no, famous? No, 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 no. I thought that there was two of them, but... No. No, two, I think there's two Tupac movies. I've heard nothing but bad things about the Tupac movie, but okay, that's 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 a that's a very you clear just watched the progression. Hood cinema review of it, and that's it. Yeah, honestly, that's all I'm thinking about. Yeah, dog. Yeah, that's that's actually true. That I, is actually I know, true because we watched that together. <laughs> that's actually true. I've never, I know you didn't watch that movie. I know you didn't watch it. fucking Cisco and Ebert review it. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like that's the only the you know, there's probably like a New York Times article, a Rolling Stone blurb, and the Prims Hood video, cinema hood cinema video. And what what is the real news? What is the what, we the Prim Prim yeah. Prim yeah, yeah, shout yeah, yeah, outs yeah. Prim. We love you Prim. But ba back back so I was listening to that type of shit, mm -hmm. and then we started listening to Wayne because um like Dedication Two and like Drought Three came out, and then from that it progressed to like Gucci, um. Young Dro, Young LA, like Atlanta, kind of like like Atlanta shit. It's so weird because I feel like minus the Nas thing, which we're gonna circle back on because that's actually fascinating that you like Nas. I never took you for I never took you for a Nas fan. Nas is sweet. Ever. You know what I'm saying? I always figured you more on that side of the beef, like aligning a little bit more with Jay. I'm not a big Jay guy. Yeah, I'm not really into Jay-Z either. Uh, here's the thing is, ostensibly, like, I like, like, I should like Jay-Z more because he's just about, like, getting money. Nas wants to be on some, like, I'm the best MC shit, you know? Like, but... I, I don't want this to become a fucking podcast where we sit here as 30-something-year-old men and talk about hip-hop. So if we could move on past this part, I'd be stoked. But that is the progression of music I I mean, to. what what I wanted to say is that, like, I feel like the Nas, Jay-Z thing, that's, like, the generation prior to us, like, our older siblings. And then, like, we really got, like, trapping music. And I feel like that's why so many of us were trapping when we were I younger. Mean, that was, like, my biggest... Um, motivation for to like be successful and have money like throughout my teens and 20s was like i was like just listening to i listen to like old like yes. i'll start listening to rap music now and i'm like i need to like get my bands <laughs> i'm listening to like rio i'm like i want to go shopping and like get some fucking like new drink you know that shit really motivates me but there are certain kids and you know exactly what i'm talking about 
white kids who will come in the shop or who I've dealt with, and I'm just like, bro, like you should not be listening to rap music. You know, like kids who like there will be kids who come in and they're like trying to be like opium or they're like off, like they're drinking lean, but they're like, and then their mom will come in, they have like a black card, and I'm like, you, you should like go listen to fucking country music, bro. Mm, like yeah. save yourself. I mean, bro, back in the early two thousands, motherfuckers were wearing like giant bape hoodies and like bape sneakers and like baggy ass fucking like jeans. I, I will say I've thought about that a lot, but if you just stay down for twenty years of your life, eventually it'll just kind of like ingrain into you. I'm speaking from experience here, and then <laughs> you're just good to, good to go, kind of. But you know, I don't have a real job either. I, I mean, the thing with the new opium music also is the fact that, like, they really just be banging on, like, doing drugs a lot more. And our shit was more like, like, about, Gucci. Like, sell no, but they were do rapping about doing drugs. But it was also more about, like, drinking. We were doing a lot of, like, e-pills, like, you know, like, pink, blue dolphins, you know. Like I wasn't doing that shit. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, like, I was always scared of ecstasy. You never seen I True Life? I loved ecstasy. You dude. never seen True Life? I'm addicted to ecstasy. And, like, they did the scan of the dude's brain. And it's, <laughs> like, it's, like, Swiss, yeah, it's, like, it's yeah. like Swiss cheese, dude. Well, it happens. I guess so. But I, I mean, like, I wasn't popping e pills every night, you know, like, but getting geeked up is kind of fun. You do, you've done more Molly in the past t decade than I did my entire life. So don't even talk to me about that. See, that, that is actually untrue. And I'll tell you why. Because. Six years ago, I got a crown on my tooth, and like when I when I did started to do Molly after uh, that, like I would be clenching my jaw, I'd be clenching my jaw, and I'd wake up, tooth would be in so much fucking pain the next day, and so I stopped. That's honestly just like up a until show. Until the age. crown, you were doing way more Molly than me. <laughs> Every once in a little while, it wasn't like really like a big thing for me. Your it's, brain is Swiss cheese now. I know, dude. I, I was actually thinking about this the other day. Um, this might be like too long of an anecdote, even, but I was just thinking about my favorite intervention episodes. <laughs> and like, my favorite favorite one was there was a dude who was addicted to like like not even like like he was addicted to cough syrup, but like. Over the counter cough syrup. You know, oh. like, he was addicted to like robo tripping. Oh, and uh, interesting choice. It like pans to his mom and she's like, you know, it's so scary. Like, you know, let's say his name's like Rob, like Rob being out there. And he told me that basically he was like selling his body to get Robitussin. And he was like, she's like, and then he told me this really fucked up story where like, he paid this older man, and the older man like was like autoerotic asphyxiation, like basically doing autoerotic asphyxiation, and it almost, you know, he like almost passed out, and then it pans back to the dude, and he was like, "Yeah, that was not worth twenty five dollars." <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I remember being like, "Oh shit!" Well, he was probably in a federal minimum wage state, so that's like six hours of his time. That's a long time without drinking Robitussin. I mean, my God, dude, ah, uh, doing something sexual for some Tussin, tugging for Tussin <laughs> is nuts. <laughs> tugging for Tussin is, oh, that's I so think he, sad. He Maybe doing more than that. Oh, oh, let's just more like plugging for Tussin. <laughs> So sad. Yeah, so it's so, rough, ain't it? Um, so so sad. But yeah, I don't know what mu like what music were you listening to? Actually, I don't really care, honestly. Oh, that's that's crazy. But I mean, in reality, I was listening to the same shit. Yeah, Gucci, right? Gucci, just like a lot Wayne. more Major Laser mixed in. Uh, Major Laser and all that. That was like a little bit like later, but, but like during high were, school, you were a DJ too. I was. A lot of people don't know that about me. I was. Nate was like a pretty poppin. Like, uh, signed to Mad Decent DJ. I was so mid. I was such a mid DJ. It's like one of those things. <laughs> Don't that let I, Soza tell it. I have to, like, look back on that and, like, really confront the truth that, like, I was not a good <laughs> DJ. I wasn't good. I had no pull. Like, it just, I just, what, I just wasn't good at it. Like, people may say that, oh, yeah, like, you were, nah, no. Mm -mm. And I, I, towards the end, I really just started to hate DJing so much. It was not fun. Really? Yeah, I mean, like, it just kind of became, like, a job. You know what I'm saying? You're fucking with promoters. You're fucking with, like, prima donna acts that are, like, coming in. They want their bread, like, now. You're, like, you gotta, you're banging them. on, like, a club door or something, like, trying to get, like, money the next day. Nobody's in there. No. It's just, like, annoying. And it's just, like, I don't want to be a 30-year-old Brooklyn DJ, if I'm being real. <laughs> you, were, you were barreling towards that fate, so I'm glad you, you just veered off and went back to school. Yeah, you know what I mean? Maybe when I'm 40, I'll bring yeah, it. I'll, I'll, I'll pop back. Out. This is that's good. This is also uh, yeah, it could be a wedding DJ, but this is also <laughs> a, uh, this is also a, a PSA to all DJs and DJ Jays people watching this uh, podcast that you know. 
there are schools that will teach you to be an electrician at any time in your life. You can join the union whenever. You can become a firefighter. You could be a plumber. There are trades. We need trades. You know, the world, while the world does not have enough DJs, um, we also don't have enough electricians either. So just like that's all I'm saying. Just think about it. There's <laughs> a world full of DJs, dude. That was such a nasty time. Everybody was DJing. The, the meme where it's God pouring. He's like, oops. And it's like DJs. There's like a million gods going on. The world. Come to my show tonight, bro. It's like, uh, I think it's, I, I, see, I, th- I maybe it's because I'm getting older, but I feel like it's less and less so. But I think for like people y'all's age in their 20s. That's like, it's, it's the archetype of a lot of people. Like people like, it's not like common at 30. And if it is, that's like a problem. If like, you know too many people to do it. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's honestly, that is so astute. Yeah, that is such an astute observation. It usually is like, you know, if you're 30 and you know a lot of DJs, it usually um, is the sign of a substance abuse problem of some sort. For sure, for sure. It's just not, it's just rough. Unless you're actually making money. Like, we know some DJs that actually make money. They do tour. We? They do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. They make it. They seem to do fine, at least. You see that Lil John's doing yoga and shit now? Yeah. That shit kind of crazy. What yeah. a what a parlay. Yeah. Yeah. You're not gonna start the. What, you're not gonna start doing like some uh, holistic shit after Luke's NYC is done. I might. I don't know. What do you think? What would you sell? Camel milk. Camel milk. I'm trying to cure autism, baby. That's what I heard. I got I got my first test subject staring right at me right now. <laughs> So just a drop of just a drop of the camel's milk. <laughs> just take a little sip. Come on, bro. You pop out and you now you're an alpha. Camel milk just coming right off your fucking <laughs> <laughs> dripping right here. I'm like, what does that smell? Yeah. I, I could do like candles or something. I don't know. Ooh, ooh, a candle with a crystal in it. Ooh. Uh, do you ever do? You, I guess see, you're not on TikTok. I can never talk to you about this stuff. There's a whole thing of there's like a whole there's, there are these companies that sell candles and like you pay like forty dollars for the candle, but there's a chance there might be like three hundred dollars in the middle of the candle. And these people just melt them and they see what they get. Really? Yeah. And they always it's always like twelve dollars. <laughs> It's like that's. I mean, these so companies rid- are running at it for a profit, you know. <laughs> yeah, like what the fuck? Like what are the cents? You know, off top. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. You feel me? Cents. I know what you said. Cents, uh, dude. That's such a <laughs> fucking stupid thing to do. It's kind of sick. It's like scratch offs. <laughs> it's like but, it's like scratch offs for holistic baddies. Um, true that. True that. But I mean, the thrill of a scratch off, getting it from a from a nasty little bodega. You got your little quarter. Nothing. Anything less than a quarter is bad luck. I be seeing an Asian dude over at Don Juan. Every single time I go in there, I swear to God, he buys 30 scratch offs. He spends hundreds of dollars just wearing. Yeah, think about how much he makes. Nothing. I don't know that. Nothing. He, where is he getting the money for the scratchers then? He pro- I don't know. And he has an apartment and he has to buy groceries. He probably is coming up off these things. I don't know, dude. He looks not like he's having a good time. <laughs> Well, he has to be having a good time if he's getting all those scratch offs. He'd be like, another, another one? <laughs> the dude's not hard. Like, are you sure? The casino's far as hell. There's one on like, every corner here. I, I just feel so bad for him because he's got those, like, he's got those, uh, the sport flip flops that you get from, like, a boat, like, uh, from, like, a dollar store. And he's always, like, half out of them and his feet are kind of dragging. And I see him coming oh. and I'm like, it makes me so sad, kind of. I'm like, who are you? You should, buy him, you should buy him one of the $30 ones, like the big $30 ones, because that might be like his ticket out of poverty I'm if like, he hits that. Here you go, boss. If he hits that shit, I'm fucking <laughs> licking that nigga, bro. There's no way he's walking out of there. That's crazy. He's lucky he walks out of there anyway. <laughs> then she just shuffles in. And I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. And he's he like, another lives one. in this building, bro. You think so? Oh, maybe. Some old-ass Chinese people are here. That's that's true. There are a lot of old Chinese families in my building, and there's one that has the dog that <laughs> be dog. screaming. <laughs> it sounds like they're murdering the dog every time they take it for a walk. It sounds like they're <laughs> throttling the life out of it. It's Dude, crazy. I was laying in bed, like, last weekend, and I heard a girl from across the hall be like, Hey, um, your dog's really fucking loud. <laughs> Like a new chicken moved in. That's so sick. Like, can you just can you just quiet the dog down? And the whole time the dog's like, ah, ah, <laughs> it's, ah, it's really ah. that bad. Like it just gets really excited. I guess. I don't know, bro. Dude, it was so fucking funny. She was frying the shit out. She's like, <laughs> I mean, can you get the dog down? 
But imagine you, you move into an apartment that's like almost four thousand dollars a month, and like every time the door opens next door, the dog is screeching for his <laughs> fucking life, like screaming. You don't know that, like when you move in, that's not on the that's not on the street easy listing, you know. And we got uh, I got an email. You're not supposed to have pets in this fucking building. I saw that. You're not supposed to have pets. Yeah, well, I don't know, man. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, bro. I'm like, yo. <laughs> it's so insane. It is pretty nuts, though. Oh my goodness. And I've seen the dog. The dog is like Is it the little is it the little baby poodle? The little baby poodle. It's <laughs> this fucking like big. This big. Makes Dude. so much fucking noise. I swear to God. And I'd be hearing like the people like talking to the dog. Now they'd be like, shut up, shut up, be quiet. And it's like, ah. Like it's just like <laughs> it's punching above its weight class when it comes to that noise, man. For, for sure, yeah. for sure, it definitely. Is. It's every fucking day, nine and seven o'clock. Who knows? We might fucking we might get yeah, some we audio. Might get, of this. We might get a sighting. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, oh. Mm, 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 mm. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on before I touch on the thing that I want to talk to you this morning about? Okay. Uh, last last thing I really wanted to touch on update on the motherfuckers that actually took the Starliner in the space. They're stuck up there. They're stuck up on the International Space Station. Just, just a quick update on that. All right, this is actually a good um, segue to what I wanted to talk about, which is Nate's fetish for, like, cryptoids and supernatural beings <laughs> and aliens and wanting to have sex with all of them. I never said that. Never said that. I said would. If they were hot. Cryptoids, where are you even getting this nomenclature? Yo, you're not tapped into the cryptozoology community like I am, bro. You don't know shit about the moth, is man. This some tic- is this some TikTok shit? No, this is some pre-TikTok. This is some, like, um... Did you see the moth, man? <laughs> it's a cryptoid. <laughs> what the fuck is a cryptoid? It's a cri- it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> animal that's, like, undiscovered by science. That is all, all cryptoids. Yeah, like uh, the Chupacabra, okay. Bigfoot, All right. Mothman, okay. um, aliens and shit. Uh, lo- ooh, Loch Ness Monster, dude. Like, I was going to be a cryptozoologist. I was. I remember watching... I, I would watch <laughs> hours of History Channel documentaries about like the Chupacabra and the Loch Ness Monster and shit. I know so much about that. I know a, I know a lot more about World War II than I should. That's all I watch. Because they, they'll always ask me, like, y'all always ask me, like, did you watch XYZ show when you were a kid? I was like, nah, I was watching History Channel and Discovery Channel, bro. I was like, I was learning about Nazi bunkers and shit. Oh, my God. And cryptoids. Obviously. Yeah, cryptoids, bro. There's a monster in Lake Champlain in Vermont. We should go up there. And uh, try and investigate some cryptoids. Kind of go crazy. I mean, it would be if we can fun. get this monetized. That's, that's how I'd like to spend some of the money. Honestly, we're just we're just going to parlay into doing. Weird uh, investigating weird shit like the Loch Ness monster. I mean, why not? I mean, I I got some theories that other people haven't had yet. Like, I'm gonna save them. I'm gonna save them for the pitch deck. For the pitch deck. For the A and E meeting. I mean, we know that you know about one cryptoid in particular more so than the others. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I thought you were talking about the thing we talked about this morning too. No, 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 no. We got to okay. keep wraps. The yeah, that's going to that. be on a product video. That's but I, I reveal um, one of my. Go back and watch the product video from Tuesday, uh, June twenty sixth. But I talk about um, my, one of my serious health problems and how it's affected my life. But yeah, Bigfoot's <laughs> scary, bro. You so, you're so scared. Of what Big- do you mean? I'm still scared of Bigfoot. Of course. Would it stop being scary? I mean, I've never really felt any fear because I'm not out in the Pacific Northwest just vibing out in the I'm woods. I'm going to Seattle in July, and I think this might be like my come to God moment, you know, where like I come face to face with my biggest op. We're going to be out in the woods and shit. I didn't even think about that. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm about to oh. fucking pull up and fucking buy a hammer on the streets like I'm like one of them crime movies when they get to a foreign city. Just uh, <laughs> just uh, go to the... Uh, I'm going to go buy a ghost gun in Seattle. It's like a wet up Sasquatch and <laughs> slides. A fucking 3D printed gun that I'm you got in the deep. The- about to buy a fucking uh, a ghost, a, a scratch off gun with a switch on it. You got to go to the, you got to go to the demilitarized zone or the non police area and go and get a ghost gun to make sure you handle your business while yeah. you're out there. I'm you got to protect I'm what's shoot yours. Him in his fucking shit if he comes up to me. How many bullets do you think it would take to take him down? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's like you think about it. It's like you have to buy like I guess you can't like kill an elephant with like a nine, right? No. It's got like a long ass health bar. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, Elden Ring final boss. Ugh. 
Don't talk to me about that. How has it been? <laughs> I was not wanting to talk to you about it. So okay, so I'm like, I beat Cyberpunk, and I'm like, all right, I want to download a new game. Like, I can't find it. I'm like, let me play Elden Ring. This looks kind of cool. And uh, downloaded it. I was like, ooh, there's an expansion coming out. Let me just buy both now. It's eighty dollars. Jeez. And I start playing it, and I'm like, oh, nah, this is not for me. And even Mateen was like. He's like, he looked at me with like the most concern. He was like, he's like, you downloaded Elden Ring? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, he's like, you're not going to like that game. <laughs> like, just like that. And I was like, what? Everyone's like, oh, that game is hard, bro. Dude. And I'm like, there's not like an easy mode. They're like, no. Nah, nah. And I saw, I, it took me like an hour. It took me a little while to get through the tutorial. And I came up the tutorial and there's a dude with a giant tree and he smacked me with it and I died. And I just turned it off. <laughs> and I haven't played it since. My brother tried to get me on that shit. I played it for two seconds. I was like, no. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I, I just want to play Call of Duty single player. Right. Really is mm -hmm. what I want to do on easy. <laughs> I don't want to play online. That shit sucks. Dude, getting lit up by like a 12 year old calling you the N word is so painful. And I'm good on that. I don't need to be in those lobbies. I don't need no. to be around those people. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's nasty stuff. It's nasty stuff. I might try to link banks when I'm in LA and get tapped and get jumped into FaZe Clan. <laughs> And get some to some Totino's Pizza Roll Face Clan Edition, Special Edition, <laughs> Buffalo Chickens Edition. I, you know what, uh, like, collab I would do if we did, like, a Luke's collab? What? Like, like either, like, Crispix for cereal. Ooh. Which is, like, the most, like, that's my favorite cereal. Ooh, or, uh, or, like, Ooh. rice cakes. Rice cakes? Yeah, I'm going to do, like, old people food. What the fuck? I'm trying to make that shit lit. Get some raisin bran. You on the front of the raisin no, bran box. That's, that's that's old people cereal. No, that's, that's just like gross people food. Oh, I would kill for an Ezekiel bread collab. Oh, I eat that shit. Not I, I, I eat my sandwiches. And I gotta say, nastiest bread I've ever had in my fucking life. It's not bad if you toast it. It's not. It's not tasty. It's not tasty. It tastes like peasants food, bread. <laughs> food is fuel, bro. <laughs> it tastes like something a medieval serf I mean, yeah, would eat. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, uh, I'm no. trying to tap. I'm trying to tap in with my my roots. You fucking make like a little like a sandwich, and the bread kind of disintegrates as soon as it touches any moisture. It disintegrates. That's why you gotta toast it. Why? Why? I don't want to toast my bread sometimes. And that bread gets eating, toasted eating and it hurts the roof a of your sandwich mouth. sandwich with non-toasted bread is fucking crazy, Are dog. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Grown-ass man putting condiments on, like, soft bread is so crazy, dog. Oh, whatever, dude. <laughs> That's, That's so nuts. I mean, the Ezekiel collab. Ezekiel, if the team, if y'all are watching this, we know that you are. I don't even think they have smartphones at that company. They're, they're all using, like, Blackberries and shit. They probably live in, like, the Pacific Northwest on a farm. They're probably real tight with fucking... Uh, Bigfoot and shit. <laughs> Go air that whole shit out. They're just like, <laughs> they're just like in the woods fucking with like crystals. That's how they communicate. They're fucking with some crystal, all right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, you want to, well, what did you want to say before we went on this entire other tear? You wanted to bring something else up. Oh, I don't know. I just want to talk about you trying to fuck every alien that ever existed. I just said that if an alien was hot, then I would bang on it. Captain Kirk style. I don't see what's the problem with that. More like Captain Crunch. <laughs> Anybody? You see what I have to deal with all day. That's good. <laughs> I think we're good. All right, like, subscribe. All available on all platforms. Uh, join the Patreon. The Patreon's coming very soon. We're going to show Luke's toes on it. Yeah, I might, I might crank hog too.